most recent blog post is titled A Teacher's Value Proposition. What do I want to give? What can I give? What does the school need? What does the school want? What is my value proposition? So you need to understand each of those questions differently. I won't go through it blow by blow, but it comes down to a very important question that you really need to ask with every service that you provide as a foreign teacher in a Japanese school. And I am not just talking about what you do in the room. What am I doing that nobody else could do? I mean, that's, that's the holy grail, to be always doing something that nobody else could do things that are unique about you. And it's not to say you should always do those things, uh, but you should be aware that those things are in your, in your arsenal, in your repertoire. And then a much more conservative question, but a question you really need to get good at answering. You need to look at yourself critically as a foreign teacher in a Japanese school. The school has made a very deliberate decision in most cases to hire more foreign teachers than they really, really have to hire in terms of legalities or what historically has been done. I mean, schools tend to be hiring these days more foreign teachers than they used to hire. It is not a given that you belong at the school. You always need to be thinking about what your value proposition is. Why should they be hiring you and not a Japanese English teacher? And I actually think that most foreign English teachers are aware of this question and unfortunately their reaction to this question is to try to suggest that everything that Japanese schools do with regards to English that doesn't involve foreign teachers is somehow fundamentally flawed, fundamentally just almost criminal in a way. Uh, but no, what you need to do is you need to first think about what does the school actually have the capacity to do without you? And you'll be able to focus on creating value that at the very least, no one else at the school could generate.